Alright guys, this is Eric, Perry Hill. Um, I processed 12, 13 rabbits, something like that over the weekend. Kept them on ice. I got them all deboned right now. And uh, cut them up in pieces about big as your thumb. And uh, I'm fixing to can them. You know, all, all your meat, you know. Uh, you do it for 90 minutes. I got a video also on how to I debone a rabbit and all. So if you want to check that out, I'll try to get my wife to put that in the notes and uh, and all. But I'm, I'm, looks like um, I got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve pints of rabbit that I'm gonna can looks like and trying to get them all in jars looks like I'm gonna make it just right for 12 jars um, I also have right here I'm gonna lay them out here and let you see them have all the the back straps off of those just to let you see how pretty this rabbit meat is um, this right here is going to be supper. We're going to have some of these for supper. Probably not all of them, but... If we're feeding everybody, it probably would take... It would take a bunch of them. And I uh, mm -hmm. hadn't yet quite figured out what I'm going to do with them. I think I'm... I'm thinking I want to put some seasoning on them and, and just bake them in the oven. You know. Maybe make some rice and peas and um, yeah. My wife pointed to some potatoes. Mashed potatoes are always good. And, That's my uh, favorite. Uh, but I, I ain't quite sure what I'm gonna do with them. But uh, that's twelve rabbits right there. Like I say, you can use one or two jars in a huge casserole. Which would feed a whole family, you know. Yep. Like you I say, can. rabbit noodle soup. You can make a huge pot of soup with just one jar. And uh, so it, this rabbit will go a long ways. And uh, you know, I think I got three or four more of my females bred back. And uh, so in about two more months, I'll have this many more or more. And uh, I usually keep me about two or three maybe four females and cause sometimes some of them will take to breeding and some of them won't and so I just kind of space it out and try to keep me I like to butcher about 12 at a time that gives me a nice canner full and usually gives us a couple of meals besides that and uh, so out of the 12 rabbits you're getting 12 pints so you right. pretty much a rabbit per two pints Per two pints? Yeah. Without the back straps? Right. You, I mean, you you could get two, I'm sorry, a pint per rabbit. Yeah. But you could get probably more than that if I really, um, I'll get my wife to bring the camera over here and I'll show you the other part that you had not seen yet. Oh, he's going to show you everything that he that he does now on the, um, on the rabbit. So there's the 12 jar pints of... And that's the flank muscle. That's the, the hind legs. And the hind legs. And, and the, the bacon or the belly straps, uh -huh. flaps off of them. Uh -huh. Usually I cut my back straps up too, but since we I'm going to make supper, I say the best. Yeah. I have one of these big Nesco roasters that I picked up at a yard sale for $20. You can usually get them somewhere reasonable like that. But these things are wonderful for making broth. You can see right there. So he took the carcasses. I took the front legs. Oh yeah. The deboned hind legs and all the rib meat and carcasses, backbone and all. And uh, if I remember correctly, what I'll do with that, I'll pick all that off the bone and we can make like a casserole with it. We we have a wonderful rabbit and rice casserole, like her grandmama used to make, but she used chicken, but we just used rice. Sometimes, sometimes we use chicken, and uh, 
I mean rabbit. <laughs> and uh, we use rabbit and she used chicken, but sometimes we use chicken too. But we make a wonderful casserole that in a few hours I'll pick through the bones and I'll get all the bones out, pull all the meat off. And uh, usually I have about I'm going to just say about 14 to 16 pints of broth that I can. I'll can it too. Probably be tomorrow before I get to that. Though by the time I get all this done and supper cooked. And, but what, and you'll, like that. what you'll do is you'll take that and strain it, right? Yes. Yes, I like to strain it good mm -hmm. and get all the particles and stuff out of it. Make sure there's no bones in there where it's just pure rabbit broth mm -hmm. and it's just as good if not better than chicken broth mm -hmm. and uh, I just encourage you if you've never grown rabbits on the homestead it you know you can especially in the summer you can feed them out the garden for the most part uh, instead of buying feed and uh, they're a very sustainable animal uh, there's nothing that I've said this before on videos there's nothing that can out um, reproduce the rabbit on the farm. Mm -hmm. A rabbit will produce you more meat. Meat wise now. Meat wise. A cow I think could give you more. No. No, they give a cow? Are you sure? I am absolutely they positive. They give you milk. Oh, you're they talking you about other products. Yeah. They give yeah. you I'm just talking meat? about meat. Okay, right. There's nothing can out produce a rabbit. A hog, a cow, because it takes so long, a rabbit can have a litter every 31 days. Of course, you know, you got to go through a couple of months of her weaning the babies and getting her bread back, you know. But she can have four litters a year. And halfway through the year, if you save back all your does from the first litter, they can be bred right around the nine month. And just say you had 10 does, you know, you could have upwards of 100, you know. And then if you save half of those or does, you've got. 50 and then the next time you could have a thousand so you can see where the rabbit can easily outproduce anything they're so prolific and on um, but we're going to cook some up for supper we're going to can some and we'll make some broth to have to season other stuff with soups we really enjoy it in our peas you know cooking our peas or any of our beans in the rabbit broth, chicken broth, we put up a lot of chicken broth too, and uh, we never have enough broth. Eh? Never have enough broth. Seem like, and if you want to know how to butcher a rabbit, a chicken, or a pig, process them. I'm talking about cut them into edible pieces. Um, April the 13th and 14th, I believe it it's is. It's the weekend. It's that Friday. And you Saturday. can look online. It's Friday and Saturday. It's Keepers of the old ways here in Dothan, Alabama. I'll be, I'll, me and my son and my brother-in-law probably will have three classes each day. We'll show you how to process a half a pig. We'll show you how to skin and dress and process a rabbit. And the same with a chicken. And so if you're interested in any of those things. It's and not too late to register. It's not too late to register. Um, you need to register for the classes, though. They're filling up quick. And, uh, you know, I'll be glad to show you out there. It is an extra fee besides the gate admission for these classes. But in the pig processing, I hope that we're going to be showing you how to cut it up in pieces. Then we're going to be grinding sausage this year and cooking some. We're also going to draw names for the rabbit and the chicken that I'll be processing in the classes. And you can come by and pick that up when you start to leave. I'll keep it on ice for you. And if you so desire to take one home and cook it and see what a homegrown, home-raised chicken or rabbit tastes like, you know, you have to take the class, you have to put your name in the hat, and you'll have to get drawn to take it home. But in the pig class, I know we're going to cook enough pan sausage for everybody to try it. So I encourage you to come out, um, like I said, I think it's the 13th and 14th, Friday, Saturday, at Landmark Park in Dothan, Alabama. You can look online at Keepers of the Old Ways. Um, just punch that in. It'll come up, and uh, you can see where to register and all. Um, buy your tickets. There's going to be food vendors there. It's going to be probably 20, 25 YouTubers there. We're going to have our goodies there. We're going to have our um, Perry Hill Farm stuff, salsa, jams, jellies, 
uh, candied jalapenos, that kind of thing. But anyway, just sharing this little bit with you. It's a Monday afternoon. I got home from work. I processed some rabbits over the weekend. Need to get them in some jars and all. Get them, get them stored away for down the road. Pretty soon, it's going to be time to start canning vegetables again. And I uh, want to get all this meat and all jarred up and in the freezer and all such as that. Again, I just thank you for watching. God bless you. You know, remember, a simple life is a much more enjoyable life. So get outside, enjoy your farm, enjoy nature. Come to some of these events. Learn to be sustainable. We may need it for long. Thank you again. God bless you. Mm -hmm.